Good morning, good day, good evening. Greetings wherever you're calling from in the world or connecting from, should I say. Welcome to this positive intelligence initiation session. So session number one, it is a pod meeting and a practice session where we get to reflect on our intentions for the program and commit to one another. My name is Anissa Wilhelmstetter. I am a creativity and creative change coach and also the founder of Creative Change Coaching. Positive intelligence is a framework designed to help us lead positive change in all areas of our lives with a unique perspective of looking at the saboteurs, how we ourselves get in our own way because of the conditioning of our minds. So when we bring negativity versus the sage perspective, which is a more positive orientation, hence positive intelligence. And this is designed by Shirzad Shamin, author of the book by the same name. I encourage you to bring your own individuality and experience and insights and to make the practices your own. Without much further ado, let's get into the session. And to do that, I'd like to share my screen. There we go. Let's go into presentation view, the big screen. Yep, take a moment to arrive. So positive intelligence, pod meeting one. We will look at inquiry. So we will reflect or have discussions based on three rounds, three offerings for the session. And this will generate insight into what we want and how we want to show up. And insight is useful for implementation. What are we going to do going forward? What is the sustainable solution we seek? In most programs or in our lives in general, we set a new year's resolution and now by April or whatever month you're in, it's forgotten or we go on a course and we learn, we're invigorated, we're motivated. We even start putting things into practice and we even make progress when you start a new diet or some other new habit or quitting an old habit. But why are these not sustainable? Why do we lose motivation? So what is different with positive intelligence? We're looking at sustainable solutions beyond the symptoms. So for example, if you're tired, they sleep, but what's keeping you up at night? So the saboteur, what is this thing that you are doing to yourself? These habits of mind, for example. And then, so we wanna win at the root level, and then we wanna go beyond the insights we generate to strength building. And this comes, practice comes from doing, from implementation, taking action, learning from that, and then taking more action. And then finally, integrating frameworks. We learn so many things from so many different places, seven pillars here, five touchstones there, three strategies, six tactics. We want to bring these frameworks together, just like you have the primary colors, red, blue, and yellow, and you can combine these. We want to bring things together in a harmonious whole. And positive intelligence encourages us to do that. Now, I've said a lot. Let's take a moment to arrive. One thing that was highlighted in this week's video session I call it three to thrive. There will be three steps I will suggest inspired by it is that we wanna notice when the judge or saboteur is getting in our way, when they are activated. And this is what we do, stop. We really need to, as soon as we notice 
The saboteur will be making our choices, determining our mood, compromising our well-being, and whether we live our potential. And therefore, to take self-command back, we pause. And then we practice. Your PQ rep, you will learn more about what that is. For now, just take it to be, you will exhale, or you will scrunch your shoulders and relax it, tense some muscle and release. So this is the, this is the practice. And then we will proceed. We will go ahead with our lives rather than pulling back. So pause, practice, and proceed. And this saboteur tells us many lies about that they're good for you and that they're badgering you is to help you improve. But it creates anxiety. It creates blame, shame, grief, all this negative reinforcement where we're trying to avoid something, something like it's a prevention focus or a compliance focus to make us do something instead of a compassionate attitude, instead of positive reinforcement and positive engagement instead of creativity. Then we have, you see here, we have our saboteurs and our sage powers. We have identified in positive intelligence 10 saboteurs. You can rename these as you wish, the judge being the head honcho. And again, you can find a name for your judge. You might say defender. I know in Harry Potter, it's what the dementors. And we want to bring sage powers such as empathy, explore innovate, navigate, and activate. You will learn more about it as we proceed. So again, we don't want to be like Sisyphus. That's the saboteur. See that? Pushing all the negative baggage up the hill to get to the top. And there it goes all the way back, setting you back. So we want to break that cycle and show up as the sage. Again, how, what percentage of the time are we in this Zen zone? Choosing the sage, self-directed, self-led. So the percentage we call PQ reps and the percentage of time that we are in sage rather than saboteur that's making our choices is the PQ score, positive intelligence quotient. And this determines our well-being and performance. So how good we feel in ourselves and in life. More often we can come meet challenges as opportunities and choose the sage perspective with an intention to hold a positive present attitude instead of saboteur, letting the saboteur choose, so negativity, the better we will feel and actually the better our performance in all areas of our lives. So we want to boost self-command muscle through PQ reps. Again, the saboteurs use motivation through negative emotions, stress, fear, anger, guilt, shame, and insecurity. And the sage encourages us when we choose this, the motivation is through positive emotions, empathy, curiosity, passion, purpose, and creativity. Again, saboteurs use aversion. We're trying to avoid something or prevent something. And the sage advises us to move towards what we desire, what we want to create, how we want to show up. So in our pod discussion, can we agree to 100% confidentiality? And we need to assign a leader for this session. I have been assigned the leader. A little bit, we will talk. 
each sharing a little about ourselves, our likely saboteurs, negative emotions we feel when that saboteur is activated, the goals number three and the desired outcomes with the program. So these will be in the discussions. The tricks our saboteurs might use to derail our daily practice. We want to get into a habit of identifying and talking about these even to ourselves. And then to ensure a strong part, what are the commitments we want to make? What is the part? What is the support and accountability group from three to many members? We are currently three. It has been shown, scientific studies, that 500% increase in the success rate when people attempting to create positive new habits do so within a support or accountability structure rather than alone. So in a pod like this and with a coach, for example. And what does a pod actually do? We will meet weekly, we have weekly commitments, ideally Monday, Tuesday. After everyone has watched the week's videos and the suggested duration of our, in our sessions, we give it five minutes per member, no matter how many rounds. So it will total to each person having spoken for five minutes in total. Okay, and daily commitment, we want to go online, preferably through the app, and talk about how we are doing with the app guided practice, the daily guided practice. And then we can just take a few seconds, 30 seconds to check in. And the key is that we want to feel one another's presence and it's an opportunity to reach out if we're falling behind. What does the pod leader do? So this first session, I'm the pod leader. We can keep it the same or we can rotate. Uh, and then we want to, a leader ensures the pod meeting is going to go on, that it's scheduled and everyone has, have, has watched the video before. And during the meeting, what does the pod leader do? keeps time or assigns someone to keep the time and make sure everyone gets a chance to contribute equally. Now, if someone hasn't checked in online for a couple of days, the pod re uh, leader can reach out or get one of the other members to do so. We want to commit to this that no one is left behind. We want the pod to be safe and supportive space Therefore, we don't judge, criticize any member based on a relative level of progress or so some standard, imagined standard or consistency of practice. So we're not using a compliance model and we support and encourage. So we bring compassion rather than judgment, criticism or blame. There's something important to be said about trust and vulnerability when we're creating a safe and supportive space. Trust is the crucial or critical foundation for the success of our pod. And vulnerability generates trust. Invulnerability erodes trust. Trust is co-created. We all contribute by our willingness to be vulnerable. And then what is vulnerability? Simply this, each of us dares ourselves to push 10% beyond our comfort zone. So to stay in the zone means just you step into the stretch and we will choose to share or reveal just that little bit more about ourselves, our thoughts and emotions than the judge would be comfortable with and 10% beyond one's comfort zone looks different for different members. For one person, it might mean, okay, I had a stretch, I'm willing to admit, okay, 
they're saboteurs. I'm not perfect. And that's a stretch, 10%. Another a 10% stretch might be I'm able to share details of my saboteurs and talk about it in details. For example, how it's harming relationships or impacting this, that, or the other. But we're not here to judge or compare one member's expression of vulnerability relative to another. Each person should choose for themselves what 10% beyond their current comfort level looks like. And only that person can know what that is. No one else. The plus side and the bonus or the, yeah, the gift of vulnerability is that it is contagious. So one of us being vulnerable makes it so safer for others to do the same. And each member's 10% contribution fuels a spiral of increasingly trusting and safe space for all. So this positive upward spiral. Therefore, the pod becomes a safe microcosm for practicing how to be more vulnerable and authentic 10% of the time. So we get to practice in the small safe space that is a reflection of how we want to show up in the larger space. And it will help us improve all our relationships outside the pods because trust is limited or determined by how vulnerable each person is willing to be. What are the goals of this pod meeting? We want to establish the pods protocols, the commitments, the agreements, so we can support one another to achieve our desired goals for the program. We wanna help each other get clear about goals for the program and how to maintain success through the six weeks. And then there will be three discussion topics. So we will do three rounds where we get to talk for five minutes a shared five minutes each time. And this brings us to round one's discussion topic. My goals and desired outcomes for this program are, so what I want, so what are those tangible results? What I wanna achieve? What would victory look like? So some tips before we go into the conversation, make our goals specific, make them excited, exciting so we feel motivated. Motivation is a key. This is a mental fitness program and 80% of the value will come from practice, doing the daily app guided practices because these build the mental muscles and form new habits. Still on discussion tips for round one, we want to choose a desired outcome that can be highly motivational, that can be in performance, whether this is work or any other area of your life. The performance might stretch into wellness, so that's your energy, your health, your well being, your healing. And so we want to reduce stress, increase peace of mind, joy, etc. And finally, our relationships, which I call love, including relationship with ourselves. And I would actually add a category, imagine a book icon for learning. Round one discussion tips continued. We want to really envision that desired outcome. So it's specific tangible, and we really feel it. There's a visceral sense of it. It feels alive. We want to imagine it's helpful to an actual scene that showcases the achievement of this desired outcome. What does it look like in a tangible way in life? For example, in a relationship, sitting with your client, you're both cheerful, 
engaged, sharing, etc. What is the client saying? Another example, you want to reduce stress. Maybe you can imagine sleeping through the night. So here we get to the breakout room or conversation room. Let's promise 100% confidentiality as we begin to share. Hold up our hands. I promise that I will not disclose any information revealed by anyone in this part that might be considered personal or private to anyone. So I won't reveal this to anyone outside this part. Do we agree? We have a yes. So our conversation, my goals and desired outcomes from this program are, so what do I wanna achieve the goal to score, the outcome to experience? Let's do this for five minutes, bringing the sage to the game. And for a moment, I am going to stop share if this is And I'm going to pause recording briefly. Welcome back. I hope that proved to be a fruitful, motivating conversation and you're starting to get clarity about what you want. Let's go in to have a look at round two and I will share my screen. So we did that. In round two's discussion, so we have the saboteur is going to feature in this conversation. And we're going to talk about this. My saboteurs might try to derail my app-guided daily practice by... Some tips for this second round of discussion. Watch out for saboteur self-preservation. Saboteurs will try to discourage you from doing this work, which would weaken them. And there are three saboteur self-preservation strategies. And what are the three things you can expect? So we're not acting surprised when they happen. Time, saboteurs love to say, you don't have time. And then it will be helpful to preempt these to remind ourselves. This work demands less than 3% of our waking minutes over six weeks. And saboteurs are wasting far more than 3% of our mental and emotional energy. And investing 3% of our time over six weeks to gain far greater efficiency in use of our time for years to come. The second thing that the saboteur does as a self-preservation strategy, skepticism. And how do we tell the difference then between skepticism, so that's judgment, our negative evaluations and discernment. Being able to tell the difference between what's helpful and unhelpful. If you're currently skeptical of this program, consider the difference between the saboteur and the sage. Your sage being discerning to protect you against falsehood or lies. Compared to so you're not joining a cult, for example. Your saboteur being cynical to protect their own control over you. So it's not in your best interest. It's closed-minded and doesn't allow you to have any new experiences and only experiences that amount to rearranging prejudices. So keeping the saboteur in control. So how could you tell the difference? Get a sense of that. Skepticism, skepticism, study the research, what helps, 
you explore others' experience with the program, and you can reassure yourself that this is not another gimmick or uh, false claims or a cult. You can't cover, discover your blind spots if you insist they don't exist. So when your saboteurs tell you this, nothing, you know, nothing getting in your way, we're not getting in your way, everything's good. And then the program's greatest benefits come from doing the exercises, the practices. So you generate your own personal evidence. Are you willing to dive in and try? And then the third thing the saboteurs love telling us is how good they are for us, how we will be no one and get nothing done without them. Protecting us, the judge says, I protect you. Controller, I get work done. Without me, you'd do nothing if I didn't control you. Stickler, I make sure you do your best because I'm a perfectionist. Without me telling you what standards are, then I'm here to ensure quality, etc. How do you counter the saboteur saying, I'm good for you in all the ways that they do so? Remember, saboteurs are never your best option. You don't want them leading your sled or your ship. All research evidence is that shows your sage will perform better, feel better, generate better relationships. So all three areas, performance, well-being, and relationships and love, you can imagine up arrows. And you will get to experience this for yourself in the second half of the program. So let's go into round two. And this is what we're talking about. My saboteurs might try to derail my app guided daily practice by, and there you have it again. Let's do that for five minutes. I will pause the share or stop the share, stop the recording while you do this. Welcome back. I hope that that was a stimulating discussion and now for this final home run, victory run, I'd like to share my screen again so we can move to discussion three. So that was two. And yeah, now that we're talking about the saboteurs, we have an idea what they will say. They will also get in the way of our commitments to these parts, to our weekly meeting beyond the video and the and then to our participation in the parts, how we show up. Again, some discussion tips. Anything you don't like about your other part members or about what participation is asking of you, these are clues of how we can grow. Saboteurs will try to discourage us from doing this work because it undermines their command over us. It weakens them and we want to weaken the saboteur and strengthen the sage. We are aware of the strategies for preservation such as the time, the skepticism, etc. and I'm good for you. You wanna see the pod as a microcosm, a reflection of the greater pod. So we have the small world within the big world and as in the world, there are people who come with their own styles, their own saboteurs, their own strengths, their own weaknesses. And how we show up in the pod reflects how we show up most likely in other relationships and areas of life. The pod provides a safe space for us to experiment, to expose the saboteur reactions, that we are having, it reveals it. And we are having these to other people's saboteurs or imperfections. And 
they practice in a different way. And our saboteurs will have a lot to say about that. Some pods stay together for years. And there's no reason why we would not connect in a way that maybe we will continue. So a reminder of our pod commitments, attend the weekly pod meeting, having watched the video for the week. The weekly video is made available over the weekend, usually a Saturday. Pods get to meet on Monday or early Tuesday, even on a Sunday, depending on what you need to do from the video. The daily online check-in with the pod. So that's online, daily 30 seconds. How's it going with my practice? Someone hasn't checked in online for a couple of days. We can make sure that someone reaches out to them because we don't want to leave anyone behind. Everyone makes a contribution and adds value. So in our breakout room three, my saboteurs might sabotage my part commitment and participation by Let's talk about that. Let your pod know if you want any particular support from them to help with your commitment. My saboteurs might sabotage my pod commitment and participation by We will continue. If this is a video, you can pause it. So you can continue and there we go. And if you're returning from your breakout session then, or if this is the end and, you, and you're gonna turn the video off and continue on your own, I still want to say thank you for your participation, your energy and until next time, may you stay well May you stay safe and may you continue to prosper from your practices. Well done.